What's up guys, Brendan Hancock here with another episode of Groove Subaru Today, and today we've brought along the all new 2020 Subaru Outback, and this one in particular is the XT Touring trim level, which is new for 2020. Now what we're gonna focus on today specifically is the all new 11.6 inch head unit that is now available on the 2020 Legacies and Outbacks. Let's go take a look inside. So we're sitting inside of the 2020 XT Touring Outback right now, uh, although that doesn't really matter because any Subaru Outback or Legacy for that matter for 2020 is going to have this new 11.6 inch head unit. So, so long as it's not a base trim level, it's going to have this head unit. Now, this being a top of the line, it does have the built-in navigation. So some of them are not going to have that, but that's pretty much where the difference is and those two will, will end. So pretty much everything that we say here, you may have a premium trim level that you're looking at. So long as it has the 11.6, almost everything we say here is gonna reign true for that as well. So we'll start with the, the new navigation in here. So this one is built with the, uh, the, and, uh, the new built-in navigation by TomTom Tom here. And I must say it's quite impressive. Um, you have a couple different modes that you can change in in terms of your view here. So you can do the 2D overhead view. I'm just tapping the compass here, by the way, to change that view. You can also do the kind of zoomed out view where it's gonna show you know, north as the top of the screen. I don't really like that one because you know, if you're going south, it's showing you going down on the map, so it's kind of confusing. And then you also have the 3D view, which typically is my favorite. Now, I'm expecting a map update to change this because normally the 3D view is not gonna give you quite as many street names you know, as perhaps the 2D overhead view may, but it's showing me no street names. Now, it will if I have an address in there that I've typed in, it will show me, you know, the highlighted route with the name of the street that I'm going to turn on to. But other than that, there's no street names that are shown. It will, it will show you the different towns and stuff that you're passing, but that's it. So I, I expect a map update will change that eventually, but we'll have to see. So now I can also expand this a little bit if I want it to take up the entire screen here, or I can compress it if I want to have a couple of options of things to rotate through up here. So I can change that with the little arrows here. So I can scroll through a couple of different options of things I want to look at, like percent throttle, the weather. I could turn X mode on or off from up here, although there are other ways to do that, which we'll get to later. Uh, but for the most part, I'd probably just say, you know, expand it to cover the whole thing. Now, if I want to put an address in, I have two options. I can just hit the search button here, type it in, or I can go to menu and select home or go to my favorites or just hit search again and type it in as well. Now, if I want to use voice activation, I just have to hit the voice button and say, navigate to and then save the address. Uh, when doing that though, you do need to, you know, speak at a nice cadence, you know, clearly and everything. Um, and sometimes if you're trying to say, you know, navigate to a much more, you know, a, a specific place like, you know, Groove Subaru or something like that, it may not point, uh, come up. Um, however, if you say, you know, find nearest for different, you know, points of interest as they are referred to, things like Starbucks, you know, King Supers, Kroger, whatever you have where you are, um, those things typically do come up and it works quite well. So we'll X out of here, go back to the main menu. Uh, the radio, I definitely love what they've done with this because we still have all pretty much the same kind of things, but they've definitely added a few things. So if we do wanna, we have our presets down here. We have 18 presets, just as we had in the previous head unit, and we'll set those the same way. You'll simply go to the radio station you want using the physical turn knob here, and then you can just push and hold, and it will set it as your preset. We do still have the arrows on the left and right of the steering wheel over here. Um, and you can scroll through your presets that way, or they're typically it's just easier to just tap them. Um, we do have HD radio. Some stations, as you can see here, do have multiple stations with the same frequency, which is kind of cool. Um, and you also have a replay feature, so if you really like a song, you can just hit replay on it. It doesn't tend to work for talk radio, which makes sense, but if you want to re-listen to a song, you have the option of doing that. We have our scan buttons up here. We can easily go to the EQ and sound position. Uh, you know, that used to be a different setting here, but it's nice and easy to adjust it. I love that they put that right on that screen with the radio. And what I like even more is that they have a station list. Now they previously had this for Sirius XM radio only, but now for AM and FM, you can also select what it is that you want to do. And that is super, super helpful, especially if you're traveling um, and don't necessarily know what you're looking for. So this is super, super helpful. I'm going to X out of here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Scan button up here. We're still seeing up here, you can uh, have a couple of things you can look at if you want to. It's the same thing we just looked at before. But they definitely got a lot going on in this infotainment system, which is cool. Now we take a look over here at media. This is just gonna be everything that is not 
uh, you know, the radio, uh, not, not AM, not FM, not satellite. So we've got a couple different things up here. Uh, we have Bluetooth audio, we have USB, we also have the iPod, you know, if you plugged in like to the aux cable, an old iPod or something like that. Or we also have CD player and, you know, another Bluetooth player with your aux cable. Now the CD player kind of makes you think we don't have one here, but don't fret my friends. How do you do this again? There we go. There's two things now. It's a little different than it used to be. So you have a, kind of like a top here. Oh, that's the top one. Here we go. So CD player is in here, just a one disc as usual. You also have a little 12 volt charger in there as well. Um, so yeah, and they also give you the ability to do the EQ and sound position here as well, which is super, super handy. Now if we take a look over here at phone, you still can connect your phone via Bluetooth, although I prefer Apple CarPlay. So right now I am plugged in here. One of the uh, problems we had many, many complaints with previously with Apple CarPlay I'm sorry, not with Apple CarPlay, but with kind of the way things were set up here was there was no real place to put your phone when you had to plug it in. It just, they had this little cubby under here, but it's kind of too small to put if you had one of the bigger phones. But now, you've got this nice deep spot here, and I have like the bigger phone here too, and it fits beautifully right there. So I mean, yeah, you still got to deal with the cable, what have you, but definitely fits way more easily right here than it used to, which is really cool. Now we're taking a look here at CarPlay. CarPlay has changed quite a bit. If you've done the most recent update for Apple, like for your iPhone, you'll notice CarPlay is quite a bit different. So it looks kind of similar here. Um, you know, we still have Google Maps, Waze, and everything. I prefer to connect my phone this way rather than Bluetooth. I have noticed that the sound quality is at least twice as good when you have it connected there. Plus, whenever you hit the voice button, you can use Siri, you can use Google Maps, you can use Waze, which I typically would prefer, you know, over the built in navigation. So now the other cool thing that we have the option to do now though, is you notice there's a little thing here for kind of a split screen. So now I can have the navigation over here, but also still have, you know, like what's, you know, playing music from my phone. I can also just easily, instead of having to X out of that screen, with this head unit specifically, I now can just go to the radio, play my music, and then also still have the navigation and stuff like that up here, which is cool. So even if I go to Google Maps, I can still have Google Maps up here and then also have my radio stuff on the same screen. So it's a nice little split screen there. Now, even if you didn't have this head unit, you know, the new update with CarPlay does still allow for you to do this kind of split screen here if we were to ignore that bottom area. But I definitely love how they're doing it with this head unit because I have the radio down there. I typically listen, just listen to the radio, not so much music from my phone. So it is very helpful to have it up here if you wanted to, for example, use Google Maps. I can have my map, my radio, all in one screen, which is nice because 11.6 inches is big enough to do that. So very, very cool there. Now we take a look at the apps that are built in here. Um, pretty similar stuff to what we've seen. You know, the Super Starlink app, um, ironically, is entirely unrelated to the Starlink safety and security system that we have up here, which is the telematic system. So, you know, the SOS button, the blue eye button. So the eye button being for roadside, SOS being for like, I'm having a heart attack. Uh, but the Subaru Starlink app has nothing to do with that. It just has a bunch of different apps within it. Um, you do need to have the app on your phone uh, and be connected to Bluetooth. But they have this new, I think it's like called Chimani or something like that. It's like it shows you different parks and stuff in the area. Um, there used to be, you know, if you haven't done the most recent app update, um, there was an iHeartRadio app, a weather app, a calendar app, things like that. I think they've sort of simplified it a little bit. They noticed people weren't really using a lot of those other apps, so they kind of simplified it a little bit. Uh, but we still have CarPlay here. We have Travelink, which is part of your Sirius XM subscription, which is nice. They definitely changed the, the way this looks here now. Uh, we do have the built-in navigation on this infotainment system, so the fuel prices that we have listed here, it is actually helpful because it does show us distance. Now, if you don't have the built-in navigation, it, doesn't, it only sorts them by price, and it uses a very, very generic area um, to do that with. So it might tell you to drive 45 minutes out of your way to save two cents, which is not helpful. Uh, but if we look up here to uh, we can add like favorite sports teams to check scores. You can check the stock market here. Oops, just trying to see what else there is. And we still have weather. You can check parking now, which is new. We didn't have that previously, which is cool. So it looks like you can actually check. Oh, I guess you might have to pay for that, that option. That's okay. Uh, but you still get your weather and stuff like that, weather alerts as well, which is awesome. I guess the weather alerts you also need uh, to, to pay for. So cool, cool. Uh, let's take a look. Back here, the only other app we didn't talk about here was the My Subaru app. Now, in here, it doesn't really do all that much. You do need to have the app on your phone, logged into your account in order for it to work here. Um, and we don't have this connected right now, so that's why it's not really showing anything. Uh, but, you know, normally in here, all you can really do is 
um, schedule a service appointment, or you can also do roadside assistance through there, which is the same as this button. Uh, but on the My Subaru app on your phone, you can do cool things like remote start now. So with the new 2020 Outback, just like we've been seeing on the Ascent and the Forester with the push button start, so so long as you have push button, you can use the My Subaru app to do things like remote start, remote lock and unlock, remote horn and lights, remote vehicle locator, all of that stuff, which is really, really cool. So not so much on here, but um, having the app, especially if you have push to start, getting that upgrade, which is called the Security Plus package of your Starlink subscription is definitely worthwhile here. Um, now, if we go to car info, they've definitely changed this up a little bit. Um, the driving statistics uh, is actually more of a traction monitor, so it will show uh, which way the wheels are going, and it will also show you which tires have traction and which ones are slipping. I really like to just use this basically if I'm using X mode, which is the off-roading mode, just because it's kind of the most off-roady screen that we have here. Um, so this is definitely a helpful screen to have up. If we go to the advanced package, it'll just show you, it looks like, which features of eyesight that are turned on. So pretty much everything is turned on. We don't have high beam assist on because our lights aren't on right now and I haven't pushed the, you know, the, the light switch on yet and reverse automatic braking is off right now because I'm in, uh, I'm not in reverse. So, and then you can also track your maintenance here. It looks like it automatically, which is cool, automatically puts the date for your first oil change and also tracks down your mileage. Now you will get maintenance reminders as well as part of your Starlink safety and uh, security, yes, your Starlink safety and security system um, subscription, which you'll get now for three years, which is cool. Uh, previously on the 19 Outbacks, it was just for one, but now that it's on a global platform, it will default to three years, which is cool, and it's cheaper. But you're actually gonna get it built in right on the car, which is cool now. They used to do it with the mileage automatically, but they didn't put the date in, which is very nice. So I do like that they do that now. So now if we go over here to settings and everything here, uh, we'll take a look here, kind of similar how we used to have it. On the, on the bottom of the screen on a 19, it had like general, phone, sound, vehicle, that kind of stuff. Now it's kind of up at the top here and they've got a couple extra things too that we can put settings on. So if we're looking under general here, if we go to clock, now since we have the built-in navigation, we don't really need to change this to manual, but if you don't have that, you will need to manually adjust your clock. So just go to time setting up here, go to manual, and then right there, right away, it lets you do that automatically, which is cool. Sweet. And then if you take a look at the Wi-Fi, we do still have Wi-Fi or the Wi-Fi hotspot. Now this Wi-Fi right here, this is gonna be used to do over the air software updates for your infotainment system, as well as map updates. So um, all you need to do is just go to, so make sure Wi-Fi is turned on, go to available networks. You'll find your network at your house. You know, um, if you don't have a garage, just get as close to the house as you can. Or honestly, if you, you live in the city in a high rise and it's really difficult, maybe you, know, you can do it at your work. Doing it over the air is definitely easier than doing it via USB, but um, also, if you have a friend, you know, whose house you go to twice a year, at least, you know, that's enough. I mean, they only do these updates so often. And so as long as you have a friend whose house you go to twice a year, just ask if you can connect to their Wi-Fi. And every time you do, it'll just automatically check for the updates. So it appears that it automatically does, um, you know, check for it. You do have this protective setup where you can put a specific pin in there to uh, automatically do it if you'd like to, which is cool. Uh, but I do recommend definitely doing that if you have the ability to. The Wi-Fi hotspot. Um, I believe the you know, terms and conditions of it are very similar to how they were. It's still probably through AT&T. Um, this allows you to create a hotspot. Most people can you know, create a hotspot on their phone. I, I would see value in this you know, if you have a bunch of kids and you have Wi-Fi only you know, iPads or something like that and you go on a lot of trips. That kind of makes sense. But I think for most people probably don't need to do the Wi-Fi hotspot. But it is cool to have an option there. Um, other things that we have in here too, you can change your tire pressure units. I like that that's nice and simple now. You don't need to go over here and, and change all that stuff. If you take a look at climate control here. What, customize the AC button. What is this? Oh, I think it's for what's shown down here, I guess. That's weird. I don't know why they would do that. Um, home screen shortcuts are cool. Um, we want to keep that on usually, but that allows you to create custom shortcuts. So for example, if I want to go to a specific radio station, or if I want to have it like FM over here, instead of having to go to radio, then select FM, I can just go boom right to FM and it's going to do it. Or the probably the most helpful one is if you have friends with foreign names that you know you can't, can't really pronounce too well, like voice activation just doesn't seem to work for it. Um, you can add their contact as a shortcut, which is kind of cool. So let's go back to settings here. Edit mode, what? There we go. Boom. Oh, I guess there's an edit mode now. That's cool. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, periodic rest notification, that just tells you to take a rest every two hours. I don't really think you need that on there. I think you know when you're tired. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at sound. Uh, as you notice, there was a 
you know, when you're on the radio or you're on media, there was a place for you to do the EQ and sound position right there, which is cool. Um, you really don't need to do too much in here. I usually find it to be easiest to adjust the volume of things as they're happening. So a lot of times it seems like with CarPlay specifically or Android Auto that the turn-by-turn -turn sound for like Google Maps and stuff tends to be very loud. In my opinion, the easiest way of adjusting these volumes is just as they're happening, turn the volume knob at that time and it will save it to whatever you adjusted it to. And I find that to definitely be the easiest. Um, not too much to really change in here. Everything you really want on is going to be on, which is good. You could set this up to avoid tollways and stuff. This is for the navigation settings and things. Um, obviously, it would probably not want to avoid ferries. It looks like they do that as a, or they probably would want to avoid ferries. So, it looks like they do that automatic for you. Um, and you can also go in here and see if there's any available updates for the maps here as well, as it looks like. Um, phone settings, I don't really know m much of what you would need to do in here. I guess you can check your messages. I guess you could. I think those are all just on, no? Hmm. Well, I think it's, oh, this is because I'm connected to CarPlay, that's why. Auto show connect device, you want that on. So yeah, there's not really much to change in here. I guess you could change it to like not accept text message and stuff, but since we are connected to CarPlay, it's automatically gonna do all that stuff. So it'd be a little different if you're connected to Bluetooth, it looks like. I don't really know what settings you'd need to change with the radio, but I guess you just have HD settings on, which is good. And if you go over to car, this is where you can uh, take a look at and change a lot of the eyesight stuff. So if you take a look at eyesight, pre-collision braking, everything that you want to be on is on. I think it's weird that they so select drive for like if you're in the UK or, or not, which is kind of strange. You can change the acceleration characteristic, uh, characteristics of the cruise control in here. Um, so basically as it picks up, let's say you're locked onto someone in eyesight like with adaptive cruise control, you're set to a higher speed than they're going currently and they get out of your way, it's adjusting how quickly it accelerates after that, which is cool. Um, I would keep the lead vehicle acquisition sound, that's when it beeps whenever it picks up a car in front uh, when using adaptive cruise, so I would keep all that on there, which is good. Uh, but you can also take a look at some of these other systems. Keyless entry system, you know, you can change it to, when you walk up to the driver door, you can change it to open all the doors if you want to. I'm not gonna change any of this stuff here. Um, so I personally like that that setting to be changed. You can change the sensitivity of the auto light, light sensor, which I will actually just change this for the person. Uh, this is just changing the frequency at which the car is asking if it's dark outside. Um, so you can change all that. So you don't want it doing it every second like it would at mid. Um, you can change the auto door lock and unlock setting. I personally like to change the auto door unlock to when I shift into park, the doors unlock. So if I'm dropping, some, you know, if I'm dropping someone off the airport, boom, park, doors unlock, I'm ready to go. But I'm not gonna change that for these people because they can make their own choice. Um, this is also where like some of the features like the auto start stop and things like that you would need to uh, to go into here to change that stuff. Now if we do take a look you can do X mode and stuff in here turn that on or off. Obviously you don't want that on right now. You turn off your steering responsive headlights. However if we're at the home screen if I go over here this is really good. I like this feature here. Um, all the basic stuff that I would need to do I can turn on or off like turning on X mode stuff like that. So I don't actually need to go into settings, scroll over, go to car, scroll all the way down. I don't need to do that stuff. It's only if you really want to change kind of some of the more minute details and things that you would need to go in here. You did see up here too, we have the door, uh, door mirror settings. They do automatically on the touring trim level fold in. And we also have reverse tilt. So as you're backing up, they tilt down a little bit. That's going to help you to uh, kind of see a little bit more of the edge of the car a little bit more easily. So yeah, I think that's all uh, for settings here. So we go back to the homepage, kind of get to the actual homepage here. There's not a lot of, of physical buttons here. I mean, we, we do have the, the volume button. Um, it still seems like you basically have to turn the volume to zero before you get out of the car if you don't want the radio coming back on. Uh, we do have the hazard buttons up here, which is nice. And then we do have for increasing and decreasing the temperature, we still have uh, physical buttons for that, which is cool. Um, heated seats though now are gonna be, oops, Tap that. They changed this a little bit. So I can change the volume up here, but also we have the ventilated seats now, since this is a touring trim level, which is cool. I might actually keep those on, thank you. Um, but also if you do tap on it, it's kind of weird. You have to tap on it, and then you can actually see, you can, if you want to change it manually, you can kind of slide fan speed, that's too much. Um, you, or you can change manually what, what you want to, uh, where you want to have the air facing. Now I do like that they show this cool little image. Oops, I guess it only stays up there for so long. So they do have this cool little image that shows you like exactly where the air is coming out and what vents they are. Um, obviously you're seeing it doesn't stay up too long, but um, I definitely think that that's kind of cool. So if I change it, you can see 
it's showing the cool little light there. And that's a very detailed image, and it is, you know, exactly what this car looks like, which is cool. It doesn't have the brown leather, so it's probably the same for all the trim levels, but um, except for the base, obviously. Uh, but that's cool that you can do it down here. And we do also have this auto button. Now, you may have noticed when I went into settings, I would recommend getting that auto button there. It looks like you have the option to change a few things that show right here, and I think that was under car settings. I'm not mistaken. It was under climate, yeah? It was under general. It was under general here. But I do recommend having the auto there, because a lot of times you're going to want to do um, full auto, and so you want that to be there, yeah, so if I go to climate control, customize climate button, so previously this was AC, so see it changes it to AC, but you can autom you can easily turn AC on, I think the full auto is definitely the, the best button to have there, so just uh, go to settings, general, and then go to climate control, and make sure you change that to auto, because this way, you know, you can just tap it, it's full auto, you're ready to go, and, and the car is just going to do everything that it needs to do to get to the temperature you want, so that's the easiest. You can also just manually decrease or increase fan speed here and an easy on off right there. But if you want to actually kind of get customized with it, you do need to tap the center and can adjust things accordingly. Turn AC on or off, circulating button on or off. Uh, but the easiest thing, like I said, just full auto. It does what it needs to do, you're good to go. We do also have our defroster buttons here. Physical buttons, the defroster for the rear will turn off after 15 minutes as a default front defroster. And then we have our manual two knob up here, which is cool. Now, other stuff to take a look at. I think we're getting towards the end here, guys. I mean, we already talked about the things we can take a look up up here. Average, uh, you know, acceleration, instantaneous fuel economy, all that kind of stuff up here. I guess, it, I mean, there's not, it's a lot of basic stuff. It's sort of simplified a little bit from if you kind of think of like a Forester, how they have that screen up here. It's not quite as many options, but um, definitely, definitely pretty cool. In general, I will say, you know, it's, I think for some people, it's going to be a bit, you know, it's going to take some getting used to. I don't think you need to be overwhelmed by it by any means. I know it's large. I know there's a lot of stuff you can do. But for all the simple stuff, I mean, all you need to do to connect your phone, you know, especially if it's an iPhone, just plug it in. Phone's connected. I, I really wouldn't even worry about Bluetooth. Honestly, it is so much better to just use CarPlay. Just plug in your phone. Everything's done. If you want to make a call, push the voice button. Siri's going to call you want. If you want to go somewhere, if you're plugged in, hit the voice button. Navigate to Groove Subaru. It's very, very simple. It just pops up right on your screen. And then obviously you just have you know, your radio. If you want to listen to the radio, you're good to go. So all the, all the extra fancy stuff, you know, the cruise control, that thing, you don't really need to use any of that if you don't want to. I think they're cool features. Um, you, I, I personally would, but you know, the pre-collision braking, everything's already on. You don't need to overcomplicate it. It just, you can do a lot of stuff. So um, overall, very, very impressed with this head unit. I think Subaru did a fantastic job. Um, as I'm spending more time with it, it is getting a lot easier to use. I was a, initially a little bit uh, overwhelmed, as many of you may be initially when you first look at it, but there is definitely no need to be. I've only had, you know, maybe 10 hours or so, you know, of experience with this head unit versus, you know, a 2019, which I probably have 10,000 hours sitting in, you know. Um, but this one uh, is definitely, I'm getting used to it. I, I like it very much. The only thing really I think could use some improvement is just, with the map in the 3D view, for those that do have the built-in navigation, I would like to see uh, more streets there. Now, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys found this video to be helpful. If you did like this video, make sure to give us a like below. And for more helpful videos like this, subscribe to our channel. Now to check out our current inventory of 2020 Subaru Outbacks, visit our website at GrooveSubaru.com and give us a call today to schedule your test drive. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time on Groove Subaru Today. Take care.